Hello, everyone. So in this tutorial, I will explain to you how to model a geosomal pile. And in here, we are focusing on just the mechanical uh, loading part. And the thermal part will be explained in a different tutorial. Now, to start modeling the, the pile in Abacus, we'll start a new project. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. I will not save the, this one. Okay, so we'll start a new project. So when we start a new project, what we, a good habit is actually we save the database first using a name, so save as. I just call it geosomal pile, say tutorial, okay. So this is only a mechanical loading part. Now let's start with modeling the piles of parts starting to the parts, okay? And this is where you can create a part. So in our case, we want to model our, our system in a axisymmetric geometry, which means the model will rotate, can be rotated to 360 degree in 3D space. And we model this pile problem in two dimensional problem. Now here, we're starting with modeling the pile, okay? Pile, deformable, shell element, and a process size of 50, 50, okay? So let's continue. Now, and here to, to model the pile, we can using a rectangle shape because in it is in the axisymmetry geometry, it's a rectangle geometry. Now we could either draw on this um, space or actually if you know the, the, the dimension, we can just define where is the first point 0.0, 0 and the second point, is the pile diameter of one meter, radius of 0 0.5, and depth of 10, I'm sorry, 10, 20, as a minus sign in the front because we want to do it subsurface, okay? Now, we, we've done with the pile. So this is actually uh, a geometry code model in along the axis symmetry line in this direction. Now then the second part is we will be modeling the soil components, so the second part, which is called soil, right? And then select the axisymmetry, deformable, shell, similar size, continue. Now, this model, we're using multiple points, okay? Starting from the soil's position, uh, just next to, next to the pile, all right? And the second point, so if we model the geometry in 10 meters in the radius direction and the second points, then the third point will be describing the bottom corner of my model, direction of 10 and minus of 40 because uh, the power is 20. So I would set, set a dimension of two times the power's depth. Now we're having on the top, we're having some model. We can adjust automatic geometry to here. Now then we have to go into the middle uh, which is zero and minus 40, okay? Then we we'll go to the bottom of our pile, zero minus 20, and the corner of the pile, 0 0.5 minus 20. Then we can go back to the original point. So by just uh, closing this geometry, okay? Now, this the geometry is closed, and then we can say done. Now, this is our soil part. Now we'll complete the part of modeling different components of this model. Now we have two components. I may name them as pile and soil. So this is actually a good naming system that later on you can rely to select which one in the modeling process is tedious. Now we go to the next one. So next part, if you go into the menu or the module here, the second part is called property, which means we will define what is the material property we want to model in this modeling procedures. Okay. Now we definitely were having a multiple material material properties models. So we can starting with our pile. Now our, our pile will have will use a concrete material. Okay, a concrete material, so that you can find a, a sum of the material properties uh, in the tutorial notes. Okay, so we're starting doing this. Okay, so let's do uh, the material one as a pile. Okay. Now, what we need here is several quantities, 
Uh, the first one is the density of the pile. Let's say 2.5. So note, note the unit system we're choosing here is kilonewton meter. So the density is ton per cubic meter. Right? Now this is the first one density. Now if, now if I close it, I, I can also go back to edit in the manager here. Edit. Okay, I need more. So for example, so I I, I can define everything in this material properties, right? First of all, density. Second is the our elastic modulus, so elasticity. So elastic modulus. So in the tutorial, did we specify anything? Uh, uh, so we can we can put uh, a quantity here. Uh, just a sec. So we can put a quantity here in for the Young's modulus, uh, which typically, if you're looking at uh, the units of this, is kilopascal. Okay, kilopascal. So we could say 1.3 e seven. Okay. Then the Poisson's ratio, which is 0.33. Then the okay. So now the second thing is the elasticity has been defined. And if you want to do the thermal analysis, what you can do next is actually looking at the thermal conductivity and the diffusivity, uh, specific uh, heat of this model. For example, you can go to thermal conductivity. So for the pile, uh, we put 2.77, okay. And heat, uh, latent uh, specific heat. 100. Okay. Now you could also do put a thermal expansion coefficient just in case if you want to do a thermal uh, mechanical coupling, which means with the temperature field will change our stress field. So in this case, thermal expansion coefficient for the pile is 2.3 e minus 5. Okay, so one, de one degree of change will give you that much of strength. Okay, now the pile is done. Now, second, we can create a soil for material properties, starting with density. Density uh, from the table um, would be 1.45. And then we will using poro elasticity for this case. So we're having a log modulus from table, 0 0.035, or some ratio. 0.3, 10,000 limit, zero, okay? Now, this is for the elastic property. Within the elastic property, we're using a cam, cam, clay, um, cam clay model. It's called cam plasticity. So the material cohesion. Uh, we're having uh, different properties uh, in here. Uh, so, just a second. Uh, we're using clay plus the top cap plasticity. So we'll clean, we'll clean this um, part. Okay, so mechanical plasticity, clay plasticity. Okay, now we have a lock bulk modulus 0 0.093, stress ratio of one, initial yield when they Six two, one, six eight two. Then wet yielding one flow stress ratio one. Okay, now this is done. Then you, we can looking at the thermal property, conductivity, conductivity of one point five, and then. Specific heat. Of one thousand three six six nine. Okay. Um, then thermal expansion. When e minus six, and for the soil we would also like to define the permeability uh, of 
of the bottom of the material, okay? Uh, which will be which will be in here other than pull fluid, right? Then oops, um, pull fluid. Then you have a permeability, right? So you're having the quantity of permeability is one e minus eight, which was in the in the tutorial sessions, right? So what we can do a little bit explaining a bit quicker calculation, so we can set an kind of unrealistic a large permeability, just let the fluid flow freely, okay? Just to, for, for this purpose. But if you do want to model reality soil, you need to put an actual number there. The porosity is five, okay? Um, done. A value of a specific weight, okay? So I, we need to also specific, uh, for the specific, the, the pore fluid's uh, specific weight. Uh, it's a bit too small. So. So specify the weight of wetting fluid. So in here we put nine point eight one. Basically, that's the specific weight of my uh, pool fluid, which is the water. Okay. And I have a the material model defined. Now what I need to do next is uh, define two different uh, sections to assign what the material models belongs to. Okay. I'll we'll start with this one. So I can put a section, basically that's my, say my soil, right? Homogenize, solid, continue. Now I will have a material, which is the soil, okay? Then I choose this, I say, okay, choose this material. Um, now the section two, I can gen create, so the second one is pile. Again, the same thing. So you choose pile, okay? So that's the section which contains the piles material properties. Now, then I have assign basically in this section, okay, as my uh, material properties. So what you can still do is you still call the soil. Now I'll quote you which section it is, this is soil. So which uh, assign this section with soil's material property. Then what I can do is I can go to part, I could do pile. So now here's the, my pile model. Again, assign uh, my piles properties to this section, okay? All right. And you, of course, collect, then select the pile. And this pile section is the material property of pile. Now I have two sections which I have assigned to two material properties. Now sec second step, third step is assembly. So I have to put two parts together. Okay, I put two parts together. So I need both of them. Okay, I say okay. Now basically I would having these two components is basically pile here in in the middle, and soil in the surrounding part. Okay. Now I have the I have the model put together. However, do note, these two parts do not have uh, any interaction between them yet, which we will define in next, right? So we do having step interactions, we'll do interaction later. So we do steps first. Now in the steps, what we do is we can define different uh, stages like a uh, geostatic. So our first step is geostatic, where we will apply a pressure state crossing the soil body. So we choose here the coupled thermal displacement method. Uh, instead of uh, typically in soil mechanics, we do is geostatic. We're choosing the coupled thermal mechanical uh, analysis, which is uh, giving us a possibility to study the coupled thermal mechanical behavior. Now, this compared to the classical geostatic analysis for soil, we sort of uh, ignore the pore pressure effect. Now, if you do that, then we're having uh, the description of these steps. We just say geostatic uh, 
step, uh, step stress okay now in the time period we will be, instead of using the default one we set to 100 instead of 1 we keep nonlinear uh, geometry as off okay to do a simple analysis now for the increment uh, what we uh, typically do is uh, we're using instead of using 100 uh, second as the initial step we use uh, one second as the initial step now we need also to define the maximum time and temperature change per increment, uh, which are set to degree, okay, to degree, just a very, very tolerant step. Now, uh, what we can do later, uh, if we want to perform a multiple steps analysis, we can, in this uh, step manager, uh, we can actually add uh, multiple steps. Uh, for example, later we have pile loading, and pile heating stage. So here, I would, the, the first step we're trying to here is just to adding just one geostatic step first, and then later on, we will having uh, adding more steps and go back. Okay. Now what we do next uh, is we de need to define the interaction uh, be between two parts of our model, the pile in the middle and the soil in the surrounding area. Now we by doing this, we're starting to define a interaction property, which is the second window here. We create interaction property. Now click that. So we define uh, that just called the name is contact between uh, soil and pile. Then uh, we define the mechanical interaction tangential behavior. Using the penalty method, set a friction coefficient of 0 0.3. Okay. This is a typically called skin friction between our pile and soil. Okay. Now then the second we can do is normal behavior, set as a hard contact, keep it as a more as a default. Okay. In the thermal part, we define a thermal conductance between these two parts. Right? And we define when the two parts are contact, we define 100 for the maximum uh, thermal contact. And define when the thermal contact becomes zero, the maximum, uh, the minimum distance is 0 0.1 meter. Okay. Now, let's keep going. Next step is we need to define which two pairs uh, of the soil body has to be defined as a contact pair. We start to define a contact pair, so it's called pile so soil interactions. Okay. Now we do surface to surface contact. Now, what we uh, we can set it at the very initial state. Okay, so we have two steps now: initial step and geostatic step. Now, what we found in this view is we have two parts, uh, both the pile and soil have the overlapping surfaces. It is hard to see. So what we can do is we using a displaced group view. Now we're showing pile only. Now you see the pile. So which makes us very easy to select what is the first pair of surface as, as highlighted showing this part, which is come in contact with soil. Okay. Now then we could we call the name, say pile surface. Okay. Then we need to define the second surface, which is in contact with pile. And, and we define the type as surface type. Now, we don't see the part of soil, only pile. What we do is actually go to the displace part to see the soil only. Now, which in this view, it's easy to for us to select which are the surfaces that are in contact with the geothermal pile. We call soil, okay, surface, and done. Now it will give us a window that uh, to define the property of the interaction and the uh, several different types and different calculation methods. And what is important is uh, the, in the end is the geo uh, the contact interaction property which we just defined uh, for the normal tangential and thermal contact. And if you put that quantity here, now our model uh, the contact pair has been defined. Now we go back to the view of both pile and the soil. Okay. Now we see uh, there's a, a marked up region that's showing the contact definition. We go to the next step called load. Okay. Load, which defines what is the boundary condition 
uh, and the initial condition of our calculation. Okay, so we want to define on the right edge a boundary condition which fixed uh, in the x direction, so no direction moving outwards, and in the bottom we define everything fixed uh, because both parts are far away. Now by doing this, we create a boundary condition. Okay, create a boundary condition. We choosing. Uh, say we define it at the bottom, bottom of the soil, and okay, here here we should actually choose the the surface. Okay. Now you, um, in fact, we are we need choosing the basically the displacement come come uh, here. So instead of symmetry, so so we having a displacement uh, configurations. So again, the bottom. So we say in that bottom, select the bottom, where my u1, u2, which is 2 displacement, and ur3, which is the rotation angle, we are fixed, the complete fixed. Now, now the second, we create the boundary condition for our right edge. Again, displacement. So note here, uh, we're choosing only the edge. Okay, we're done. And we say u1 is fixed. Now, now the boundary can be set. So in the middle, because the asymmetric axis, so we do not necessarily to define the boundary condition for that. So later on, when we do simple analysis, we could create another boundary condition for the edge, which is the right and the bottom, for the temperature boundary conditions. But we will do it later because in this geostatic pressure uh, step, we only need to looking at the displacement. Okay. Now, okay. Now the boundary condition is done. What you define is the load. Now we define load. First step is define a load for the boundary uh, for, for the load system. Uh, in principle, what we want to apply is the gravitational force. Okay. So at a geostatic state, mechanical, then choosing the gravitation gravity. Now the gravity will apply for the whole model with a uh, with a magnitude of specified. Say here is minus nine point eight one, which is the solution. Now this arrow shows basically the whole model is under the gravitational force. Okay. Now what we need to do next is to define a predefined field. Uh, by doing that, to looking at what 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 would be the uh, geostatic uh, pressure st uh, stress state as a definition? Now, as you can see, we're gonna have a uh, one field as a selection. Okay, if you go into this, is not uh, necessary where we want to choose uh, for this analysis. You see, there's no, no way to uh, define geostatic pressure. So the the simple reason is because we need to define this geostatic pressure at the initial state. Okay, at the initial state. Now do it again. Now initial, which is the initial, okay. Then in the other section, you or the mechanical section, we're finding an option called geostatic stress, okay. So continue. I choose the whole soil components. Now this gives me uh, a few spaces to define. Basically, the where is the zero stress, which is on the top of the, of the surface. We have a zero stress on the top, which the coordinates is zero. The vertical coordinates is zero. Then, what is the a depth D part of the model is minus 40 meter as we build the model early. We set it here, a vertical minus 40. Now, the stress component at this minus 40 meter is can be calculated by the specific weight times the depth. Okay, so basically, calculate by uh, just 570 kPa, right. The last column, which is called the lateral coefficient, which is our lateral earth coefficient, 
So we in here we just set 0 0.75, which means if I have a vertical stress of one kp, my lateral stress is 0 0.75. Okay, so that that is basically the different stress state that is specified across the sample. Now, okay, so we have the load load condition. Right. Now, we. Now, if you're looking at again the predefined field, you can see this is the situation is created in the initial state and propagated to the, the calculated at the geostatics uh, condition. Okay. Okay. The whole model that we do does have a few um, parameters which require to be specified, but I will go back later. Okay, we will go back to define them later. Now let's move on. So the next step is to mesh. Okay, do mesh. So in do mesh, you need to go to part. So because the mesh has to be uh, based on different parts. Now we're starting by seeding. So the default seeding of the mesh is quite coarse. Okay. So because if you look at the dimension of this model, so we having the, the radius of the part is only 0 0.5 meters. So we need choosing uh, elements which is smaller than that size. Here we're choosing 0 0.25. Uh, of course, this could be even uh, further refined. Now, if you apply, so this gives me a much finer uh, seeding size, basically a defined element. Now we can also mesh the part. Okay, as you can see, we can uh, immediately have a mesh. Now the default in mesh typically is not using the median axis method; it's using the advancing front. We we'll just try to using the default one, and if you do that, so you're finding the mesh is not uniform in terms of sizes is a certain optimization method but what we prefer in this case is a simple geometry we're using a median axis mesh mesh which gives us uh, quite a structured mesh in this particular case okay okay so this is a very uh, regular mesh across the whole model now for the pile a similar seed distance 0 0.25 okay and we can do the same thing with uh, the mesh now both the pile and soil has been meshed. Now next step is we need to specify which type of elements we want to study. Now different elements have different functions. In here, what we need to select is an element that enable the calculation of temperature, which means here the coupled temperature displacement type of elements. Okay. So by choosing that, right? so okay. Now, of course, uh, we have to go back to also the soil. So previously, we want to specify this element type for the, for the pile. Now, this element type coupled several space for the soil. Right? OK, now, now we are almost done. So we can go to job to open, uh, to create a job. And this is the job manager. So we can create a new job. Just call it a name, say geothermal pile. Okay. I can do continue and this will give you a, an option to control the solutions but, uh, we will set it as default now we have in this system we can just do a summit just to check what happened for this uh, initial model with only one step okay with only one step now if you do summit and at the same time you can actually do a click the monitor which give you a window give you some additional information during uh, submission, uh, calculation, and so on. Okay. So at the moment, you will see this calculation will give you an error. A simple, it's missing a few things. Now, the, this message is important. That helps us to debugging what actually can be changed to get a better solution. Okay. Now, what here says permeability is calculated, but there's not not defined of the initial wall ratio. Okay. This is, so these are the main uh, problems we have. Okay, where can we define the initial wall ratio? So now we need to go back to the load case. Again, pre, again predefined field. Just click that. Then you can see in others you see a wall ratio. Okay, so we need to select the soil body. Click OK set as 0 0.79 okay 
we can also in here define what's the saturation uh, which in our case is a fully saturated and again soil body set the saturation as one okay now I'll go back to job so now what was asking as an all sorts of an error now has been corrected let's submit again and block here also the moment Now the calculation should be in pretty simple, quite quick. Uh, even though we have lots of lots of elements in the in the model, but uh, since it's only a two-dimensional analysis, okay. Now there's a warning message saying absolute zero temperature was 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 not defined, but this is a warning message, okay. So, but it's not a error which will quit the simulations. Now you see on the top, you see there's a steps coming up, so showing uh, the calculation progresses okay now it's getting to the 17 seconds out of 100 seconds we set in the geostatic step and here is the time increment so each time step how long is the time now during the calculation we can also looking at the calculation by clicking the result then you see here is the deformed soil body a quite strange shape right quite strange shape but this is simply because uh, we apply a, a magnification factor for the displacement field. It can be corrected by the common options here. Just say uniform and set it as one. Okay, means we do not magnify. So if it's one meter deformation, it still is one meter. Now this looks normal. Okay, looks normal. Now the calculation has to finish. You see the step time is at 100 step. So you can do the job having a look at the, complete, uh, the job is complete. Okay, close. Um, and we can go back to step. Okay, so we since we only have one geostatic step, um, which is not our calculation yet, it's prepared for our calculation. So we can add here a uh, the, the second step as the pile loading, where we'll apply a, a, a pressure or force on top of our pile, and again coupled uh, temperature and displacement. Now we're using 100 as a time step and initial time step of 1 and the temperature change 2 k 2 Kelvin, okay, 2 to 3 degrees as the maximum tolerance. Okay, now we define the step but we have not defined the load yet, so we have to go to load. Okay, here shows uh, what, what load and boundary condition we have currently. So we want to apply a constant pressure on top of uh, the line. Now if you do that, so we apply a load. Okay, okay looking at the previous load with the geostat uh, the, the, the gravitational force which created in the geostatic state and propagated into our second step of pile loading. Now here uh, we try to apply in only the pile loading step, uh, a step here. Okay? Then we're choosing a pressure and continue. The pressure we need to find in where the surface is. Now it's hard to select in this uh, area. What you can do is uh, using a magnify class, just a uh, zoom out of this area. Okay. Make the selection a bit easy. Uh, click, then you can find in this boundary. And okay. Now this gives us what is the magnitude of this particular on the surface. So we, we have to be careful if we, we set say 100 kPa, that means it's 100 kPa across the whole power surface. Okay. And here we, just as an example, we apply 200 kPa, which apply to uh, a circular cross section of pi r squared. Okay, don't forget that the force is uh, total force is that. So now the amplitude uh, in this step is called only instantaneous. What I mean is, even though I set in our step 100 seconds, so instantaneous means the load will be applied at the very beginning of the time. So this is not what we want. What we want is a, a kind of a staged or ramped loading from zero to two hundred MPa, uh, kPa. Sorry. Now, uh, what we can do is do a tabular format. Just continue. So this gives me a, a possibility to set at the time zero. So my amplitude of load is zero, and end of time is one hundred second. I write one hundred, and the amplitude of this is one. It means one hundred percent of the load I'm specified. Okay. Now, now we need to change our amplitude 
to the, the tabular format, we just specify, specify in this step. Okay. Now you see an, an arrow shows on top of the pile. That shows we actually define our, our pile loading on the top. And this is created actually at the pile loading step. Now we are it's finished with step the definition of our second step, which is the pile loading. Now again, we go back to the job manager, sum the job. Now in this calculation, uh, we have two steps. Uh, we have two steps. Uh, so one is the geostatic pressure, which we have shown before. Then the second is the pile loading. Okay, so it took some time to do the calculation, and the table above gives you the pro progress of this calculation. Now we can always look in the mes message file, which gives us an instantaneous output during the calculation. We do still have the warning, which is saying the absolute zero temperature is not defined. Now, what if you want to remove that? It's easy to go back to say the, the attribute model. Oops, uh, attribute and model within the window you are having the absolute temperature saying minus 273 degrees. okay now done uh, of course uh, this will be carried on next for the next one now you see the first step is done 100 second which is geostatic loading now we go to the next step which is the pile loading and pile loading will start as a temp step one then going up and finish now it's relatively quick okay now now we have some results to check the result of different steps now if you're reading this it shows us a control of from mistress and at the top you can have a selection of as uh, mistress or pressure both are quite important for the soil now we can also looking at nt uh, looking at the displacement it's called u okay u in this case shows the magnitude we could also choose in the vertical or horizontal u1 and u2 to display now u2 is basically the settlement uh, down, moving downwards okay the sample moving downwards for the for the system okay now okay this is now we complete basically geostatic and a pile loading so what we're missing is the temperature load okay temperature loading okay so what we want to do next as the third step is define the third step for a heating okay. so we start by saying just the pile heating again the same type of analysis coupled thermal displacement and continue again here i usually to set a longer time say here I set 1000 second okay an increment again you start a small step and progress uh, forwards okay let's keep that of course we did de define was the temperature per increment c2 very broad analysis now the step is defined but uh, we of course need to define what what is the initial condition what is the boundary condition and what's the temperature loading in the loading step okay now we have not defined anything yet okay so so now we start to looking at what the initial condition for temperature go to initial other and temperature and so on so we choose the whole model initially as 70 degree 17 degree degree okay now this is only the initial condition and then we can check so how many we have multiple uh, predefined fields okay geostatic pressure var ratio saturation and its initial con initial temperature okay all right now next is we need to define a temperature boundary condition now we got a boundary condition manager so which we have already defined what's the bottom and left as the displacement now we need to define what's the temperature boundary condition for this So of course we we'll define separately only the edge, okay? Only the edge. Uh, we can't define that because uh, we need to select uh, the, the heating stage, okay? Now here we go. 
so we, do, we, do, we still get the heating stage temperature and again looking at the button set at 70 means this is far away from our piles and again we need to define what's the on the right edge again heating temperature on the right edge so 70 degrees again okay now we haven't defined yet the heating profile of the pile yet everything we define the boundary is only starting at the heating stage now we're choosing the middle to let it to be a higher temperature say plus two degree higher as its initial condition now again boundary condition click now we're choosing only the middle of the pile not the soil only the middle of the pile And the set is a 19 degree, okay? So it's just two degree higher. So basically our geothermal power is higher than the surrounding soil. Now everything the temperature bonding cleaning was created at the heating stage, the step of the heating step. Okay, now I think this is geostatic pressure, mechanical loading, and tile heating. Everything is in that these steps. What you can do is to again do a calculation or do submit. Now whether we write overwrite, okay. Then we look at the calculation. Now you notice there's no warning because we defined up to zero. Now again the message file is writing constantly to describe the status of the calculation. Now starting the first geostatic pressure pressure. Now first the down, we'll go to the pile loading step. Oh, pretty quick, right? Pretty quick. Now third step of temperature. We can check the result already. Okay. The profile. Now, temperature here is NT11. Nodal temperature of degree of freedom of E11. You see the middle is the pile having a 19 degree in the middle. Let's look at the local level. So that's the beginning of the heating. And the heating is going up, extending to the soil body, and go goes outside. Okay. Now, what we want to also check is the the displacement, say, uh, or the stress condition. For example, if you're looking at the pressure, we just want to check whether in the heating stage whether the the, the stress state is changing. So it is indeed changing. So the stress feedback is coming from the thermal expansion due to due to the pile and the soil during the heating stage. Right? So the stress change also in this domain. Uh, of course if you want to add a little more of the cooling stage and heating stage, that's that's is possible to do. Now, now, now our simulation is actually complete, it's quite quick. Now in the step what you can do next of course is you can do cooling, cycling and so on. What you can do also here is changing either added steps or changing the loading condition by editing. So you see here the pile loading on 200. You could set higher to determine what is the ultimate loading of this pile in, during the installation. All right. Now, okay, of course I don't I don't need to run again, so you can have a, a bit trial in your on your side. Okay. All right.
Good. Yeah. Right. Do you have try? That then you can add, edit a little bit more, adding more features during your practices. Okay, good luck.